Hello, in today's video I want to talk about refractors and the different types of refractors and what's right for you because you may come across different words like ED, apochromatic, achromatic, triplet. What does all this mean? Well, let's start at the bottom range which is the acromat refractor these are the most affordable and ones that are generally bought by beginners they're they're simple to use they you can use them in the daytime because if you put a star dangle in the back it will give an image that's the correct way round they're robust you don't need to align any of the optics like you do with mirror type telescopes um just really great for beginners no central obstruction so really good contrast but they do have an achilles heel called chromatic aberration Basically what happens is the light enters the telescope and travels through two lenses at the front, comes all the way down the bottom and gets focused at the eyepiece or a camera that's the back. Now, when the light gets refracted by these two elements at the front of an achromatic refractor, the crown and the flint elements usually, um, they focus at different points depending on the wavelength. And uh, generally, a simple way of putting it is that the red and the blue wavelengths focus at a different point to the green wavelengths. And our eyes are sensitive to the green, so we tend to focus for green, which puts the red and the blue wavelengths slightly out. And this can cause a halo around bright objects. And because red and blue makes purple, the halo tends to be purple. So you get this purple colour fringing and I'll pop up a picture there of the moon to sort of demonstrate what this purple colour fringing looks like. So it, this chromatic aberration tends to reduce sharpness a little bit and uh, contrast a little bit. So there is a bit of a downside, usually fine for a visual observing, but if you're getting into imaging, you need to move up to something called an ED glass refractor or a triplet refractor. Well, you don't need to, but it's just that you'll find if you start doing long exposure imaging with an acromat, that you'll find that your stars look kind of big and blobby and that soon, that soon gets a bit tiresome and you'll want something a bit better. So uh, the step up from that would be ED glass, and ED stands for extra low dispersion. So it's similar to the crown and flint elements of this telescope, telescope I've got behind me, an achromat refractor. Only the exotic glass bends, refracts the light to focus the wavelengths closer together. So you can almost, with a good ED doublet refractor, you can pretty much eliminate the vast majority of this chromatic aberration out of focus light. Now, there is one up from that, although one up is kind of debatable, depending on the quality. You can get three elements called a triplet refractor, and a good triplet refractor with these three elements that can correct for all the wavelengths of light is called an apochromat refractor. But this term apochromat is a little bit debatable because a a good doublet refractor, ED doublet refractor, will be a poor triplet refractor. So it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a grey area really that is. So generally visual observers that, that become more discerning will probably move up to a, a good ED doublet because they cool a bit quicker and they don't need a triplet. They don't need the good colour correction of a triplet refractor which is because basically imaging is going to show chromatic aberration more so you can get away with a doublet for observing but on a long exposure any residual chromatic aberration uh, will be amplified so people tend to who get really into the imaging tend to end up with a triplet refractor and uh, yeah so that's kind of the pecking order really and the price kind of escalates accordingly like you can get like a Acromat refractor. I mean, this one's a quite a big one, so it's a few hundred pounds, dollars, euros. But you can get like um, something like the Skywatch Mercury 707 that I've recently reviewed for about 120, and it comes with a mount and eyepieces to get you going, and it's good enough for looking at the moon and planets and some very bright deep sky objects. Um, it just depends what you want to do, um, but there's something to consider with. Um, 
all these types of refractor and that's the, the focal length of the telescope because that affects the chromatic aberration also. And the spherical aberration and, and all aberrations, the longer the, the tube base effectively, the less of these optical aberrations you'll see because the light's not been bent as steeply. Like this is quite a long refractor, the, the light's quite shallow. It comes through the lenses at the front and it comes together quite shallow. So it's not been bent so steeply, so the light's all focusing at the same point. It's not being distorted as much. But you get short tube refractors and that light's been bent more steeply and it's harder to A, correct for the chromatic aberration, but also harder to figure those lenses to a high uh, quality. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm particular, historically, I'm a particular fan of the classic long tube refractor, achromatic refractor. And these are really long tubes that you, you'd see in old black and white pictures. You'd see people with a long white tube refractor. And uh, these, these have a focal ratio of F15. But because, that, because the light's bent so gently, it can almost eliminate all the chromatic aberration despite using a simple crown and flint elements at the front of the telescope. So what I'd say is, um, if you are starting out and you want to observe, get yourself an achromatic refractor if you want to get a refractor instead of a Newtonian reflector or another type of telescope. Get yourself an achromat. Um, if you're more into the planets, get one that's a long tube because that's going to give you more focal length for image scale on the planets and it's going to correct for chromatic aberration better and chromatic aberration shows more on bright objects. But if you're more into sort of observing deep sky objects, get the short tube versions like a Star Travel one, uh, 102 or something like that. Shorter tube's going to give a wider field of view. It's going to show more chromatic aberration at higher powers. But when you're observing deep sky objects, you tend to do that at low powers, so it doesn't really matter. If you want to go straight into imaging, go straight for something like an, a, one of the more affordable ED doublets that are around three, four, five hundred pounds, euros, dollars. And if you're a discerning observer, go for a longer tube ED doublet refractor and if you're a discerning deep sky imager look at one of the, like the triplet refractors uh, apochromatic refractor they're commonly known as um, these can start off at about 800 though and go quite steeply up from there it just depends on the brand and um, the specs and things like that excuse me it's windy outside it's blowing the garage door um, but in recent years, things have become even more complicated again because, and it's a good thing, we're getting um, what we call pets fold designs, which, I mean, that's an old term, but um, more recently we've been getting designs of telescopes with multiple elements. They've got elements in the rear to correct for the flatness of the image as well as things like spherical and chromatic aberration. It, it, it corrects for the, the flatness so you can put a large sensor camera on the back of these and it will give you nice round stars all the way to the corners without having to add a, a, a field flattener to the back of it. And um, until recent years, these, these were really hard to produce without any problems and you used to have to buy really expensive ones to be reliable. But the with advances, um, companies like Asgard are bringing out more affordable you know, four, five, six element design refractors that are just eliminating chromatic aberration, spherical aberration, um, flat field, large field of illumination for large sensors. And uh, yeah, and they're, they're becoming more reliable. So uh, even though pets fold is not a, a new word, um, the, in more recent years, they're becoming more of an option for people because they're not having so many problems as the earlier models. Um, so yeah, so just to recap, at the very bottom, or I shouldn't say bottom because I, I love achromatic refractors, but the more affordable ones are achromatic refractors, then ED doublets, triplets, and then you get into these Petsfeld designs with, which have got multi-elements, they've got built-in correctors for the field flatness, and they're more for kind of imaging, but you can use some of them for observing as well if you just want a really nice flat field. Uh, experience when you're observing. So that was 
uh, a quick rundown of refractors and the different types. Hopefully it gives you some kind of insight on what to look for depending on what you want to do. And uh, just all that's left to do is thank my channel members and my Patreons and thank to anyone who's subscribed to the channel. And I hope to see you next time. Until then, Astro La Vista.